Yo, one of like your favorite sayings or one of your favorite quotes, bro. And bro, when I like rewatch it, it's hilarious. Like you ask a white dude, I think, like, where are your people from? Right? Or it was a Jewish, it was a Jewish dude. Yeah. So break that down. Like, one, what what is the origins of white folks? Well, we all come from extraterrestrials. But you gotta understand like it's aliens. Different. Yeah, pretty wow. much. Okay. But you got to understand, we say white people, right? Like me and you might say white because we talking. But we also have to understand language barriers, right? Like if you if I snatch something from you, you would be like, he's strong on me. But that's not a goddamn, I can't, or you might be like, he yapped that from me. You know what I'm saying? But that's not a, a legal terminology. I can't go into a courtroom and say, we're charging him with three accounts of yapping shit. You know what I'm saying? So it's language barriers. Now we say white, black, brown just to keep it simplistic, but but at the end of the day, we mm -hmm. when I when we go into scientific speaking, now we talk about phenotypes. You feel me? So you have Negroid, which is like me or you. Then you got Mongol, you no, know, you got Dravidian. Then you got Mongoloid. Then you got ca Caucasoid. Now, from my research to my knowledge, Caucasians come from Caucasians and Arabs because the Arab is genetically classified as a Caucasian. Let's let's not forget that. You know what I'm saying? So it's like even people like white people, technically Arabs is white people too, technically, mm -hmm. if you want to be technical. Now, from my research, Caucasians come from genetically engineered Dravidians. Now, Dr. Shiva is a Dravidian, right? But Dr. Shiva could easily pass off as black. If you don't know, you can put Dr. Shiva next to me and we could both say we black. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but he's not black. He's not me. He's another species, right? So whatever species created him is where other genetic engineering instances took place. So if you would, if somebody was to ask me scientifically, not being racist, just dealing with the facts, everybody on this goddamn planet come from, we have our own creators. And even when you go into the Bible, it talks about Elohim, right? Mm-hmm. What the original, what they said the original word for God was Elohim. So so the verse is really not in God said let me let, let us like make man in our images, and Elohim said let us. Elohim means many gods. So the whole thought of mono, the whole monotheistic thought train to me is is fallacy. But long story short, I would tell you that white people were genetically engineered by extraterrestrials, particularly the Pleiadians. And I would say they come from the Pleiadian star system. And this is not to try to be like attack the white man, but it's it's like it's like goddamn zoology. Of course, yo, like I realized that man because one of my favorite quotes is this: "I can tell you who controls you by who you're not allowed to criticize." Right? That's true. Or uh, even speak on because even like I seen like you were supposed to speak at CPAC, and they canceled you because over like like old comments or about the Jews. Yeah. So. So speak on that. Yes, sir. So. It wasn't even a bad comment. Now, the, 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 the uh, debate that you brought up was with a Jewish rabbi. Mm -hmm. Now, whether he was the best, I don't know, but they said he was the best. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And you watched him. I cooked his ass. <laughs> oh, I cooked his ass. You watched him. Now, it. he, that debate had already, because I got to be clear on this, that debate had already happened. You feel me? It had already happened. Before the CPAC shit. So CPAC actually is late. You know what I'm saying? CPAC went and dug up some comments of me saying, I, w I don't be believe in the validity of Judaism, and I'm willing to debate a Jewish rabbi, and I put 50000 on myself. That's mm -hmm. what I said. Now, from that point on, they tried to say I was anti-Semitic. Now, Angela Stanton, right? And I don't know if y'all know, I rock with Angela Stanton. Right? There's only one thing Angela Stan said that I don't agree with, and me and her know what that is. It was something about, you know, dealing with my kid's mom, a decision that was made. But other than that, I rock with Angela Stan. And in my opinion, she's one of the best moms when it comes to raising a man right. Because I don't think a boy should be a girl either. You know what I'm saying? So mm, I think She's I'm definitely like, controversial. I think she's right. I think Dr. <laughs> Phil was wrong. Dr. <laughs> Phil was wrong on Not that facts. one. Dr. Phil was wrong because I ain't raising no girl. And I, like I said, I don't think my man's skin want to see Lil Scotty with no dress on either. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it ain't a race thing. Of course. It ain't a race thing. It's just I, I don't think no man want his son with a dress on. But Nah, like I even realized the backlash that she was getting too for going on Dr. Phil and speaking about how she want to raise her kids. We need to go back on there. We need to do a part two. Let's do it. Let's go. <laughs> Angela, Angela, I'm going back on there with you next time she go. But goddamn, because yeah. I know I know the DSM. 
I know about transvestic disorder and pills, so I beat and got on Dr. Phil Top. But goddamn, I say that to say this. Boom. Uh, CPAC canceled Yeah, so CPAC canceled me, right? Now, when CPAC canceled me, let's say Angela Stanton, she, she invited me probably at like 11 o'clock. A.M. By like 3 p.m. I was out of there. I was gone. <laughs> Cancel. So they say the Jewish fund rate, the Jewish funders of the event didn't want me on the event. Now I said yeah. to say this. My jeweler, right? And I don't want to say like, you know, people like my my, my I got a black friend. That don't mean you like him. You know what I'm saying? But like I genuinely like my jeweler. No homo, I have to say that. My jeweler is a real nigga. He's a real nigga. My jeweler peeped my bodyguard before I my jeweler, my jeweler pressed my bodyguard about my jeweler seen what I didn't see in in my old bodyguard. And coincidentally, both the niggas who betrayed me name is Ace. Mm. So what, my, what I didn't see, my jeweler peeped it. So my jeweler always had my best interest in hand. My jeweler ain't never tried to line me up. And I ain't going to speak on his name. I ain't going to say his name. Don't worry about it. We in the back <laughs> with it. But my jeweler always held me down. I knew my jeweler since 2012. My jeweler would tell you I got a piece of jewelry made. He would tell you I came in there. In 2012 to get it before I went to jail. And I, I remembered him when I got out, so I went back to him. That's how long I've been knowing. I knew him before yeah. I even caught this case. And so uh, I, he's Jewish? Yes, he's Jewish. Okay. So I said to say, I'm not anti-Semitic. I call him right now and talk to him regular. That's my jeweler. And depending on who you is, we might, you, you know what I'm saying? But I said to say this. They said they started labeling me anti-Semitic. Yo. Now this. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 sorry, sorry. So I'm on USA Today, CNN. Now the thing is. Yo, you were thing. lit at that time, though. Listen, I, I should have a million <laughs> followers on Twitter on General Otten right now. When I seen Robert Steele like shouted you out, I'm like, bro, Robert Steele, he never shouted out no nigga, man. A CIA, come on, bro, it's Robert Steele. Now, wait, hold up. Did, now, now did uh, the now did the Robert Steele cosign happen before or after CPAC? I think before. I think before. I got to go look at the dates. I got everything. I go look at the dates, but it might have been before. But good question. Now, mm. long story short. Boom, this what happened. Now they say I'm anti-Semitic. Now, obviously I'm not anti-Semitic because not only do I have a, a Jewish gentleman that I would consider not even just like a friend, but more so like a father figure, because I call I I'll call my jeweler and ask him for some advice. You know what I'm saying? Before I call what you know what I mean? So it's like I really don't know how to categorize him. But then it's like clearly I'm doing respectful, having respectful dialogues with Jews. I did another one with a Jewish girl that's in my interview section, and then I did the debate with the rabbi you seen. So by the time they said I was anti-Semitic, I'm like, how the fuck is I anti-Semitic? I didn't already had <laughs> humble experiences with the Jewish community. And me saying that I'm willing to debate a topic does not make me anti-Semitic. So now, peep game, bow. Now from that point on, right? From that point on, somewhere within that three, four hour span, they disinvite me. Boom. Now, when they disinvite me, they just go on a smear campaign on my name. You feel what I'm saying? They just. Like, what tweet did they find, though? The one that I said, I don't believe in the validity of Judaism and I'm willing to bet $50,000 on myself in the debate. Wait, so break that down. What do you mean when you say you don't believe in the validity of Judaism? Exactly what it sounds like. <laughs> and that's no disrespect to it. Mm -hmm. I don't believe in it. Um, for one, right? It's no way you could. Okay, I'm gonna just hit him with it. I'm gonna just hit him with it. Listen, Listen, I got some shit in the cut. Don't mention words. Talk yeah. your shit, man. I'm gonna just hit him with a dagger I already threw. But I got shit in the cut I ain't brought out. If you ever want to step up and debate, I got shit in the cut I ain't never brought out. Ooh. I in debate league is waiting on him. But I said to say this. One of the points I always make is this. Right? How did they build? How was the Jews? Okay, I'm gonna bring up some. I'm gonna bring up a point right now. God told Moses to tell the Pharaoh to let my people go. That's what they say, right? Yeah. But when the Jews came into Egypt, they lied to the Pharaoh. I'm the Pharaoh. They lied to the Pharaoh and told the Pharaoh that they were stockholders and that they had jobs and they needed to borrow the land. But they really was nomads, and nomads is a homeless people. So you lied your way into somewhere. So how you enslaved, nigga? You lied to get up in here. It's like it's like if we in a club and, and Shorty's 17 and she got an ID that says she's 21 and her parents come, bitch, don't you say nobody in here holding you hostage? Because we didn't even know you wasn't 21. <laughs> you feel me? So it's like, nigga, you y'all snuck into Egypt. You snuck in there. So that's you was never a slave. You said you you said you was you said you had a business and you wanted to borrow land to conduct that business on. So for one, at what point in time was you a slave? Nigga, you asked to come up into Egypt. Egypt didn't ask you to come up in there. Now, that's for point one. Point two is this. 
the temple of Ramesses, because they say the Pharaoh Ramesses made them build, you know, those structures. Yeah. For one, y'all don't have no shit like that in Egypt. You still don't have no shit like that in Egypt to this day. For two, Jean Champelion in 1822 said, he allegedly, I'm saying allegedly, he allegedly didn't decipher the Egyptian hieroglyphics until 1822. So, how, the word Ramesses is in the 1611 Bible, which is written by King James. How the fuck did you get that word 211 years before it was discovered? You lying. You didn't even know his, You didn't even know nobody named Ramesses according to you until 1822. So how the fuck you wrote that in the book <laughs> in 1611? So to me, I feel like the Jews created a story. And then the printing press didn't come out to the 15th century, which is the end of the 1400s. So I feel like they created the story and then they backdated it. It never really happened. And then bringing it back to the temp back, bringing it back to the uh, Temple of Ramesses, it's like, yo, how did the Jews enslave you to build something that was already there? Because according to over 250 geologists, due to weather damage and water damage, because millions of gallons of water was pumped out of the joint, out of the basements of them. Because to be honest with y'all, I know a lot of people don't like Hitler, and I ain't instigating no shit. You feel me? Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people don't like Hitler, but motherfuckers ain't start getting out of e getting getting into Egypt till <laughs> Hitler went over there. That's a fact. That's a fact. That's history. You feel me? And if you go to one of the pillars in Egypt, I think it's at the Temple of Luxor. One of them, at the top, it say Champelion because it was so buried. It was buried so high up in the sand. You can go to my my university and go watch my lecture. I don't need it. It was buried like 40, 50 feet, and the, the fucking Sphinx was up to his neck. So if 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 the Germans and the Europeans didn't get into fucking into Egypt until like 1940 when you Indiana Jones type shit. How the fuck was you deciphering some shit in 18 in 1611 or 1822? You lying. And Champelion, the one who said he deciphered it, he wrote his name at the top of the shit when it was buried. So I said to say this, that proves there was weathering there. So if you look at the west side of the Great Pyramid, it's corroded from the sand blowing from the from the from the south. That's weather damage. Now, if you calculate that weather damage along with the water damage in the basement of it where millions of gallons of water was pumped out, right? Shout out Stephen Miller. Then you know that due to Egypt only getting if an inch of rain every year, it would have took over 50,000 years for this much damage to be done. You say this shit happened 3,000 years ago. It didn't happen because the building is older than the story. Y'all wrote on this wall. You wrote on this wall. Yeah. I cannot come in this motherfucker right now and say, hey, I built this wall. Of course not. Because you already wrote on it. You already wrote on it. Sure. So if the shit, if the writing on the wall is older than the story of the motherfucker who's saying they built the wall, why would I believe you? Why would I believe you? Sure. So how was you enslaved by the Pharaoh Ramesses and forced to build the Temple of Ramesses when it was already there? Yo, listen, there's one thing, there's one thing about Pharaoh, yo, is whatever Pharaoh says... My man got 20 books of research. Yeah. You feel me? All right, people, we just hit 300,000 subscribers. You know we're trying to hit 400,000 subscribers. So that little red button, tap it, tap in. Appreciate y'all.